This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famers, Mike Van Dees joining us here, Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. <laughs> they don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal? The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Hey, what up? Happy uh, Thursday it is the Jason Walker Show presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana State Law says it is your vehicle. It is your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center. Coming up in the Major Mortgage Man Cave today, we'll talk East West Shrine football. Yes, football with Sentinel coach Dane Oliver. Also on this day in history, MSUB has a new athletic director. We'll talk about that. And a whole lot more. You can watch live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can listen on Podbean, Network One Sports, TreasureStateRadio.com, and so much more. But uh, we're going to get right into it. Our first guest uh, found out, uh, well, I was told back in March, but she officially decommitted from the Lady Grizz, oh, about a week or so ago. And today she made it official, verbally committing to Butler University. We welcome in Billing Central senior Maya Hansen. Maya, how are you? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm doing good. Um, how's the last couple of weeks been for you? Oh man, it's been crazy. That's for <laughs> sure. I mean, <laughs> it was it was a good opportunity. It was a good experience to figure out all this. But I mean, I'm that type of person who likes to have a plan for my future right away. I mean, in fact, I'd like to look five years ahead if I could and just have everything planned out for me. <laughs> but so it's been a little hectic. But I'm how glad it's a relief now. <laughs> how much sleep have you gotten over the last week and a half or so? Oh man, not too much just <laughs> compared to with all this going on, plus having all of these, um, having all of our camps going on, both working camps and having, um, and playing in camps. And then also I got the opportunity to practice with the Montana All-Stars getting ready for that. Oh yeah. For their little deal. So Which yeah, you'll be it's a been, part of next a year. crazy week. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> all right. I got to know this. So, uh, Butler is the choice and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, how many texts, how many phone calls have you taken? Oh, man, I can't even count. It's been a busy day. I know. <laughs> I know. This is the most I think I've ever been on my phone, to be honest. <laughs> that is uh, fun. And you're a teenage girl. I mean, that's like normal things, right? Oh, well, not for me, I guess. I'd rather be in the gym <laughs> shooting at this moment. But <laughs> Well, I, uh, I am thankful that you're here. So I uh, got the call last night, said I wouldn't say anything until, uh, un- until I got you on the show today, but you choose Butler. Um, let's start there because you had a lot of D1 offers. You had a lot of other offers. Why Butler? I mean, just when I walked on that campus for my official visit and we just walked around, got to meet some of the players, meet the coaches, and I just kind of knew right there that I could definitely see me playing here and I could see me going to school there. So. It just hit me at that moment, but it took me a little bit to finally make the full decision, but I knew right then. Um, this is a good league, and this is a pretty good basketball team that you're joining, in the, and you're going to get thrown into the fire right away. I mean, you got another year, but you have to go up against a guy by the name of Gino Ariema and, and UConn women's basketball. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're a well-known <laughs> program, and <laughs> yeah, I mean... I'm fortunate enough to have the opportunity because, I mean, the main thing, what I love is just about basketball, just that competition aspect of it, and I know I'll definitely get it at that level. So I'm excited. It's definitely going to make me a good player for a better player. Uh, you already are a good player. Is Maya Hansen joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. Uh, some might say you are a great player. Um, how many phone calls did you have to make last night and today to other teams and coaches saying, hey, uh, thanks for the offer, but I'm not coming? I've had a call quite a oh, well, not a whole lot, I guess, but just the main ones who were kind of my last final decisions. But yeah, it's been it's been a little tough time from going to a high of calling my coach and saying yes, I'm committing to you, I'm committing to Buffalo, and then having to go back and uh, contact all the other coaches. But 
I contacted all of them, which is good. Uh, that is fantastic. You you mentioned, I talked to your dad a little bit, but you, you talked about going out to the campus in Indianapolis and getting to see Hinkle Fieldhouse. I mean, this is the most, I mean, it's on the National Historic Register. I mean, this is a very awesome gym, and you get to play in this thing. What was it like the oh, first yeah. moment you walked in to that? How awe, in awe were you? Oh, my. It was, oh, it was amazing, really. I mean, that's pretty much the basketball cathedral right there. <laughs> so it was just amazing just actually finally being on it in person and standing on that court. But I got to say, I was a little jealous of my brother, though. I have a little brother who's in seventh grade. And just with NCAA rules, I'm not allowed to go out and shoot on that court at that moment during official visit. But he could shoot all he want, <laughs> wanted. So I had to sit there on the sidelines watching my brother shoot on their gym while I just had to sit there. <laughs> I, was, I was a little jealous. But yeah, you're gonna <laughs> make a few. <laughs> you'll make it. You'll end up making a few more shots on that uh, court than he will, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll get him back. It'll <laughs> it'll bite him the butt sometimes. I'll I'll have to brag back to him. <laughs> that is awesome. Maya Hansen uh, joining us here as we talk about her decision to join Butler. Now, when you were like in the womb, and I said this back in March, is when you committed to the Lady Grizz. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you decided not to. And take me through that decision. I mean, uh, that's when I just started getting a couple more interest from other schools and everything. And I just thought at that moment, just personally for me, it was a time for me to step back and just see what's there offered for me. And I just felt, I was felt completely honest with all the, the Missoula coach and everything. And I'm not completely committed to them at that moment. If I'm looking at schools, then I don't want to take that spot away from them. So it was more for a situation just to be honest with them. And then also just a time for me to personally reflect on what's best for me in the future. How tough was that? Because you, like I said, was, you, you'd been there for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it was a little difficult to go through. I'll say that, but just with the connections I've had and just the people I know around, it was a little hard, but overall I think it was the best decision for me. Well, you end up going from the big sky to the big East, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there you go. And how, was it important for you to get away? I mean, Obviously, MSUB, Rocky, right there in your backyard, but uh, you got a chance to go D1. Was it important for you to get away from Montana, like the state? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I was talking about that with my parents, just about how far it is. But for me, I really had no desire to either go far away or stay close to home. So it wasn't too big of a deal. It was more so just finding the best place for me fit for both basketball and ac academically. And I think for my mom, it's going to hit the hardest because <laughs> she always so and saying that she's going to come live in the dorms with me anywhere I go, no matter where I go. And wow. I've, I've tried to shut that down pretty quickly. <laughs> <hang out. laughs> well, yeah, you got to be a kid and, and, and a little bit and have some fun, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. She's a little clingy, but hopefully that will get, I'll go away pretty soon. <laughs> Mom's a little clingy. It's a, not a phrase you hear a lot on the Jason Walker shows. We talked to Maya Hansen. Billing Central senior guard. Um, have you gotten over Saturday night in Great Falls yet? Uh, I mean, I always come back up, and I feel the same way every time, I guess. I mean, it's the way it ended, but I still, I mean, I just can't go over the what it should have could have. But, I mean, God, all I can do at this point is just go back, either watch the film or reflect and see what I can do differently. Did you but, yeah, it still, it still touches me pretty hard. But. Did you think that shot was going in? It, it looks good from my angle, but if it could have been at least a little, like a centimeter and an inch farther, yeah. I could have got it. But, I have. Yeah. I was right behind you on the press table. I've got a great video of it. I thought it was in. I thought the game was over. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and but... it was close. Uh, so how, how many times have you watched the, that video? Oh, shoot. Well, I've watched that film probably at least 10 to 15 times the whole entire game, just over and over, just breaking pieces apart, seeing what we could have done differently, what I could have done differently or better. And there's always something to approve, I guess, out on the court. So I just always try to pick it apart and see what I can find. Yeah, Maya Hansen, our guest here, uh, plays for the Billing Central Rams. You guys came very close. But I have said this many times since that night. That was one of the best games I've been a part of as a broadcaster because um, it was back and forth. I thought you guys were going to blow the doors off of it, and then they came back, and obviously they got the win. But – one of the best games in general, win or lose. And that was one of those games that sucked that someone had to lose. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it was definitely, it was, that was one of my favorite games I think I've ever played in. 
just being in that gym, just with how packed it was, well, how much we could have, I guess, with COVID, but <laughs> <Right>. just <laughs> with who we had there, and I mean, just that kind of mini rivalry we had between Howard and Central, it was it was definitely a fun game, and there's a lot of factors, both emotion, emotionally and physically, that were put into that game. You're uh, you got a pretty good team coming back, um, but so does Haver. So does a lot of teams from across the state of in Class A. <laughs> how how far ahead have you started looking already at uh, at next season? Oh, I was ready for season the day after state. <laughs> I was texting my coaches, my parents, everybody. I'm like, man, I'm ready to start. I'm ready to get back in the gym and get ready for next season. You didn't take but, any time off? Oh, no. I was in the gym the next day. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. So it was, I, yeah, I was ready to start, that's for sure. But, yeah, I've been looking into a lot of it. But, I mean, the only thing that's really missing from Class A girls basketball right now is just height. But, I mean, each team's missing that, so it'll definitely be a big guard play game again. So I'm looking forward to that. It'll change the game up and hopefully speed it up a little bit. Well, we all want a quicker game, but uh, um, you also are losing one of your uh, your great teammates as she's going to Carroll. How close were you to following mm-hmm. Isabel? Oh, yeah, Izzy is a great player. I was so fortunate. I was able to play with her for two years, and I'm we're definitely going to miss her. She was a big factor for us on that court, So, and she's going to have a great uh, – great four years at Carroll, so I'm, I'm very excited for her. All right, I know you're not going to tell me this, but I have to ask the question anyway. Who were your final three before you chose Butler? Yeah, I so don't know. So who were the other two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, <laughs> yeah, there was a couple factors. There were a couple other uh, factors and teams were in that, but yeah, it all came down to Butler. <laughs> Did you know that yet last night, I mean, was that the moment you're like, okay, I, I got this decision made. I've got to get it done. Because I want to live this summer. I want to have fun as a, as a high school kid this summer, even though you're going to be in the gym for 20 of the 24 <laughs> hours a day. Um, but how important was it to get this decision done before basketball season or even before school started? Oh, yeah, it was a big decision, too. I think, and I'm glad my parents, my coaches all helped me figure that out, that the sooner I do this, the more I can just relax. Because, I mean, you know how I am, just wanting to have a decision right there made and have my future all set. So it was definitely a relief because, now I can just go out and play basketball and do the thing I love. So without any other worry about my future. That is awesome. What's your uh, major going to be out at Butler? I'm thinking about health sciences, more like towards physical therapy area, but not sense stone, but that's what I'm leaning towards. Okay. Uh, MSU just hired a new uh, assistant, Katie Bussey, who's great at kinesiology stuff. Mm-hmm. I think you'd be good at that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure. A lot of, a lot of people pitching a lot of ideas, and I always take it uh, pretty well, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's so hard. I One day I think I want to do this, next I want to do the, another thing. So <laughs> we'll see. It'll probably come down to the last second. But <laughs> <laughs> Hey, growing up, you uh obviously a basketball nerd. Um, who was, who did you look up to? Who were your idols when you, when you were starting to get into the game? Well, I have to give all the credit to my dad, really. I mean, since he was a coach – for how many years at Laurel and I just remember after school walking over to that high school gym sitting down and just watching him coach his practices for the Laurel varsity boys and that's where I just really grew my love for the game I mean I'd either be sitting there watching watching him coach trying not to get in trouble by (laughs) running around and trying to play with the boys when I'm four years old or whatever but yeah or I'd be shooting at a basket but that's where the really the love of the game came for me and where most of my basketball IQ started. But what players did you look up to? Oh, man. Well, I've always been a big Jordan fan, not going to lie. I've always just grown up sitting on YouTube. I'll be late at night sitting on YouTube watching his skip past game film or all of his highlight films and all that. And when uh, the last dance came up and during quarantine, oh, man, that was the highlight of that that year for me was just sitting down. My dad and I would block out all of Sunday just to sit down and watch the last dance. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. Maya Hansen is who we're talking with. Billing Central senior guard announced her decision to go to Butler today, made it official. Um, this is a pretty good team. You got a girl from Miles Community College out there who transferred after a, a year at Miles, but uh, she's from Australia. Um, do you know any of the other girls? And, and when you went on that v- official visit, were you able to talk with any of the team? Yeah, I talked with, I want to say, like five of the girls, and I really grew close to a couple of them who I went to dinner with and got to hang out with. And so they're like, it's a great group, and it was nice to see that I was, whenever I talked to them or see them, they were either shooting at the gym or they were in the weight room listening. So 
it's nice to know that they all have that drive drive there and are always looking to get better. Um, man, who, who, what team in the Big East are you looking forward to playing the most that's not named UConn? Oh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> UConn's always a big one just because, I mean, just how well known they're or how well known they are. And, I mean, it'll definitely be some great competition, especially with Paige there and Aza Fug also coming. So it's going to, it'll be fun to play them. I don't know. Okay. That's the main one for me, I guess. <laughs> so I don't know if you're going to redshirt or not, but you could be a true freshman out on the court against Paige, who would be, I guess, a junior then. Mm-hmm. Man. Um, and you somehow get to, you know, in a switch, you're on, you're guarding her. How do you guard her? Oh man. I mean, <laughs> don't let her shoot. I guess that's made, don't let her shoot the ball with anything, but there's different ways to guard her, I guess. Yeah. Just main thing is don't let her get the ball. Cause I mean, she's so crappy and she's such a great player. What do you have to work on still? Oh, everything in my game, I guess. But I'd like to just, I'm more focusing on, at least this summer, just um, getting stronger and more explosive with my movement. Just all in general, she'll help me on the court, but mainly just for drill-wise, just still getting that jumper down. Because, I mean, that's a big thing, especially at the college level for women. If you can knock down that little um, 15-foot jumper, um, that will help you big time in the game. And, I mean, you can never be – you can always improve your shooting. So just keep getting more consistent with my shooting. And don't forget defense. Oh, yeah. Defense is a huge part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's probably going to kill me for not saying that. <laughs> exactly. Every coach is going to say rebounding and defense. Come on, Maya. You should oh, know yeah. this. Is your dad sitting there? He's going to make you run. <laughs> I, I, I have to ask this, and I don't know if you've been asked this, but what, did quarantine change your decision in this? I mean, the last year, really? No, I don't think quarantine did, but I will say I think quarantine was the best thing um, for me just to focus on basketball and just to focus on my skill development. I really think I give credit to that um, Mm -hmm. for just how much of a player I've grown just this past year, just because I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't do anything else except go outside, shoot or work on my dribbling or ball handling and anything. So I think that's where I give a lot of my credit to is just that year, just where I got to personally work, do some one-on-one drills with, well, there's this one guy who's he's not technically my big brother, but we just he's, he acts like it. So I got to play one on one against him a lot and beat him up a little bit. So nice. that helps a lot with my game. All right. Uh, what do you what music do you listen to pregame? I don't listen to music pregame. Okay, this is funny. My team thinks I'm the weirdest person when it comes to pregame. <laughs> They, yeah, because I'm, I mean, I'm not that hype person. I'm not that person getting pumped up. I'm just quietly sitting in my little corner getting ready, doing some ball handling drills, getting ready for the game. So they always make fun of me for it, but dude, I got to do what I got to do. For wow. you. <laughs> you might yeah. be the only one that I've, that I've asked that question to that has said that. <laughs> and I yeah, say, all my teammates make fun of me for it. but <laughs> I never got to watch you in person until state tournament back in March up in Great Falls. And I will say, I mean, you're focused out there. And, and <laughs> it's, I mean, a lot of emotion during the game, but warm-ups, you're just focused. And that's, I mean, it's, uh, you can tell you're a baller for sure. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, my freshman year, I went to Laurel High School and transferred mm-hmm. over to Central uh, my sophomore and junior year. But when I transferred over to Central, a lot of people would just walk up to me who don't play sports or just watch me playing and they come up and be like, Wow, my, you're like actually a nice person. I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> I'm like, what does that mean? And they're like, well, I mean, I just always go to the basketball court and you just seem so like angry and competitive. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, I'm glad I seem like a nice person to you. <laughs> wow. That's, uh, yeah. I like that. I don't know if that, I mean, it's a compliment, I think. Yeah, I'm like, I'll take it as a compliment. Like, I think you're just saying I'm competitive, but... There you go. Competitive. Yeah. Maya Hansen is competitive. She's also Ooh. nice. Um, okay, give me an update on the on the State A this year, or on the uh, State in Class A basketball this year. Who, besides Central and Haver, should we watch for? Because Harden lost some great players. Uh, was it Nevaeh that's out? She went to a college, too, somewhere out in, out in the Midwest. Um, mm-hmm. But who are we looking for in the state or in class a next year. Yeah. I still believe Harden will be out there. I mean, I have to give credit to Sydney farmer too. She's a great coach and she puts a great program together there. So, and they still have uh, some 
good players who will be seniors this year who are um, some great guards just defensively and offensively like to play physical and play well. So mm-hmm. they'll still be pretty good. And, I mean, they like to shoot, definitely like to shoot the three ball. So it's going to be a big game of uh, defending the perimeter with them. So they will still be a pretty decent team. And then always just a couple on the eastern side who are um, kind of just holding up their own over there. So they, those are just kind of games where you have to walk in and just always be prepared for anything. And you didn't name anybody in the West. Is the West Western A not affect Western you guys? Side, I, honest, I don't really know too much about the, the West Western side, but I haven't really keeping up. I, I kind of just more focus on my conference, I, I guess. Know, but I, yeah. yeah, they always come in. They always have a, a great couple of teams to come in. They're, Western side just has a lot of girls who are very athletic and they just like to go out there and play hard. So it's always definitely a battle playing them all as well. Yeah. Whitefish, Sea Falls, Butte Central was there. I mean, this is a, it's going to be another great year of girls basketball in, uh, in class A. All right. Did you, did you play anything else growing up or is it just basketball? No, I did. I kind of grew up playing every sport I guess. and then coming into high school, it was kind of iffy deciding my fall sport. So my, Freshman and sophomore year, I played soccer, oh, which my. I ended up getting. I think I'm the bad luck charm for that because <laughs> I ended up getting second place at state each year. So I played that. I was the head or the starting goalie for Laurel my freshman year, oh, yeah. and we got second. And then I was the starting goalie for Central my sophomore year, and we also got second. <laughs> so Laurel... I think it, I just blame myself. I think I'm just that bad luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> Did Laurel beat you guys? Team. Yes, they oh, did. Yeah. yeah, it's always been a battle back and forth with yep. Forum Central at yep. soccer. But yeah, then my junior year, I decided to switch over and play volleyball because oh. I was, to be honest, I, I just felt like I wasn't a very good soccer player. I mean, I can't use my feet to save my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, why, that's why I stick to the goal. That's why I stuck being goalie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's but great. then I, yeah, then I chose to play volleyball and we won a state championship. So that was pretty fun. Well, yeah, that's not too shabby. But, yeah. All mm-hmm. right. So it is National Mascot Day today. What's your favorite mascot? Well, it's got to be Bulldogs now. Oh, <laughs> I knew it's that's cheesy. You didn't say Ram, though. So there's that. I know. Well, it's Rams. I mean, Rams now, but it'll soon have to soon be Bulldogs. It'll soon be a Bulldog. <laughs> you know, that's the mascot of Whitefish. Oh, I guess oh, so. Oh, I mean, geez. <laughs> I'll, I guess I'll stick with Rams right now, and then next then you year can switch. I can go. Yes, then yes. you can switch. Um, <laughs> all right. Do you guys what what food is your pregame food? What do you enjoy? Oh, I'm not a big food person. Either. Like, I always try to stay away from food. I always get yelled at by my coaches, to be honest, because I don't eat enough before games, but. I would have to say just a sandwich, like PB and jelly, or peanut okay. butter and jelly. That's right. that's my go-to, I have to say. What, what type of <laughs> jelly, always... Oh, definitely strawberry. Grape jelly is oh, disgusting. No, we're opposites, Maya. Oh, really? Chunky or creamy peanut butter? Oh, creamy. Never chunky. What is wrong with you? No, that's the perfect <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> wheat bread, can we agree on wheat bread, though? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to pull some, like, rye or sourdough stupidness. Oh, though, no. Okay. No. Always me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, I appreciate it. I know you've been just slammed. Do you, have, uh, do you have to go pick up your brother, or did you already do that today? No, I already picked him up, yeah, okay. from camp. <laughs> All right. Um, he is currently the leading Hanson three-point field goal shooter at, at Hinkle Fieldhouse, but soon to change. <laughs> is that right? Oh, yeah. Soon to change. Pretty quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't tell him that, though. He'll brag about it all the way until I finally get a play. <laughs> well, the, hey, he's got something on you until then. So, uh, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Maya, I appreciate it. I, uh, I love your family, and uh, it's been a whirlwind three months for you. And uh, I just appreciate <laughs> everything. And, and uh, stay in touch. Let's talk before the season gets going. And um, we'll, uh, we'll definitely chat before you get to Butler. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is Maya Hansen joining us here on the Jason Walker Show, Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. Um, Great conversation with a great young lady who's going to go to Butler University. And not many people can say they get to go to Butler University. But that's pretty darn cool. And uh, congrats to her. She's she's earned it. I mean, think about it. How... Shannon Kate, who's one of the best basketball players in the state of Montana ever, obviously University of Montana, unbelievable career she could have played anywhere Cass Bauer at Montana State from Heisham she could have played multiple places um yeah Jocelyn Tinkle go to Stanford 
Uh, Ellie Tinkle went out to uh, Gonzaga. Uh, there's just there's so many to name. I mean, the Clinkers from Fairfield. Um, you know, so they're just all over the place. And those are just the most recent, you know, recent ones. But uh, well, the Hamas girls, Blythe and Brooke from Manhattan Christian. And I mean, they played at a high level at Montana State too. So the fact that Maya Hansen is going to go to Butler in the Big East, that's awesome. Unbelievably awesome. So congrats to her and her family. That's, uh, that's super cool. Um, and we'll check in with her uh, throughout the course of uh, the basketball season, um, at least before the season starts. We don't want to bother her during the season, but there you go. Um, appreciate her joining us today. That was, uh, like I said, the last, oh, geez, I guess about 19 hours have been a real whirlwind for her, especially after um, committing, announcing pu- uh, privately to certain a uh, few people and then uh, making it public today. But there you go. Good job. Congratulations, Maya Hansen. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. When we do, we're going to check in. we got football to talk about. The East-West Shrine game is this week down in Billings, Saturday night, Dela Stadium. We'll talk to the football coach that's leading the West in the battle against the East, Dane Oliver, the Sentinel High coach. When we return here, Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana State Law says it is your vehicle. It is your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center. Coming right back with Dane Oliver. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle, and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122. Equal housing lender. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State, from rodeos to portraits, and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work, then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot. Or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces, stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com Everyone knows about Dinners Done Right and the convenience of the cook and carry cuisines. It's so easy to just stop by and you have something for dinner that night. But there's also one more thing you need to know about. Dinners Done Right Grab and Go Salad Bar. Yes, I said salad bar. Always the freshest ingredients along with a daily soup and nacho bar too. So the next time you are in a rush or you just want to eat healthy, stop by Dinners Done Right for the soup, salad, and nacho bar. For monthly menus and more info, it's dinnersdoneright.com. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rucker's Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rucker's, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rucker's Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena.
Welcome back, Jason Walker Show on a Thursday. Appreciate Maya Hansen joining us. That was fun. Sweet young lady, great family. Had a few conversations with her dad, Pat. Of course, everybody knows Coach Hansen. But uh, fun stuff. Got on this day in history still to come. And by the way, for any of those other media members that are that that think that whatever that they had. I actually, I said that Maya Hansen was going to go somewhere else. March the 4th. You can go back and watch the NFHS Network broadcast of the March 4th Billing Central girls game. Because I said it during the game. Like, said she's going to decommit. Because I had a source tell me that. From the Lady Grizz. She did. And she gets a great opportunity to go to the Big East. It's un- that's awesome. So for any other media members that think they had it first... Um, trying to phrase this the right way. Bite me. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. On a different note, <laughs> we have, we've got some great football coming up this week, and it's a chance for some great seniors in the state of Montana and a couple of players from Canada each year that – They get to come down and play, but it is the East-West Shrine Game. It is the 74th Shrine Game this week. It'll be at Dela Stadium in Billings Saturday night. 7 o'clock kickoff, or the festivities will begin, but it's a a great time, and uh, these guys have been practicing together now for, oh, about a week, four days or so, and uh, they've been having um, a good time. They get to do a lot of great things. They know what the focus is. The focus is the football game, but it doesn't really matter who wins or loses. I mean, it does. Let's not forget. I mean, this isn't sixth grade softball or six-year-old softball, but there's a bigger cause. And that's the cool thing about this game is they're playing for the Shriners Hospitals of Spokane. And it is the Montana Shrine game is the largest fundraiser for the Shriners Hospital of Spokane. How cool is that? It's also the oldest all-star game in the United States for high school football. And joining us now to talk about it, he uh, won a state championship last uh, November. Sentinel's Dane Oliver joins us now here on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. Well, Coach, I appreciate you joining me. How's, uh, how's life been since from November state championship and then now getting ready for the Shrine game? Well, I tell you what, uh, I'm probably most excited about just kind of we're finally coming out of the COVID, right? Because it was a it was a crazy year um, filled with so many unknowns, and obviously it finished off really well for us. And then took some downtime, and <clears throat> honored to be coaching the Shrine Game with a great group of kids and coaches, and uh, mainly the the mission of the Shrine Game is what and the kids responding to that has been uh, super special, and we get a chance to go back to Billings. Last time we were there, we had a great memory at Gala Stadium for me personally, and now hopefully we get a chance to make some more memories. You don't have much of a voice. You, the last time I talked to you, right before the state <clears throat> championship game, you could talk. Now you can't. Are you working harder on the Shrine game? Well, I tell you what, <laughs> uh, myself and our coaching staff, you know, it's, you know, we're competitive people, and we want to put a good product on the field. So to try to take 40 guys from all over the state, different levels of football, I may have raised my voice a few times. so, um, But we'll be good come Saturday night, I promise you. Dane Oliver, our guest here, the head coach of Missoula Sentinel and coaching the West on Saturday nights in the uh, East-West Shrine game. You mentioned the East, I mean, the, the, what, the, what it's behind and really what this game is all about. It's more than just a score on the scoreboard at the end of the night down there at, Day, at Dayless. This means so much, and it's really cool for me, and I, and I think you said too, but to watch these kids – accept that and, and really grab it and run with it. Yeah, this is a, the largest fundraiser in the nation. Uh, the Montana Shrine Game raises more money than any Shrine Game in the nation. So, you know, we, we don't take that lightly. But I tell you what, you come day one here uh, a few days ago and viewed it, and they bring some Shriner kids who've been positively affected by the, the hospital in Spokane, and, and they start talking about their struggles. And it, it makes you be very grateful and humble for the situation that not only myself, but all the players are in. We're super lucky to be able to, to get up and, and not have the struggles they do. So, man, our kids have been unbelievable. They get it. They get why we're playing. 
uh, we want to raise a bunch of money, but we also want to put on a show. And Saturday night's a chance to hopefully play in front of a bunch of people and get that, that Friday night Friday night light feel that we've all been missing. And just excited to, to get down to Billings and play a great football game. How's this week of practice been going? And like you said, you I mean, you're bringing kids from different divisions, different states different different countries you got a kid from from calgary up there in canada but you you're bringing kids together from all sorts of um backgrounds and yet they all gel and it, they have fun together yep. i mean i've seen these practices over the course of the last few years and and, and it's just like they're all all are all stars but they all support each other too yeah you have the city kids and the and the kids from the smaller level school and and we all can learn something from each other. And coming out of the pandemic where we were all so individualized, just worried about ourselves, uh, to see a group of young men just make some friendships that, uh, from different parts of the state, uh, it's, it's rewarding. And I tell you what, they're, they please and thank you. Yes, sir. No, sir. Type of kids. They have a tremendous work ethic. And these are the kids that are going to be leaders in our community and to, to get them to, to see the value of giving back and serving other people. Uh, is it's a special thing and and it's it's uh it's been a it's been a heck of a week i bet yeah and uh and, and it's been a busy week as dane oliver our guest here on the jason walker show mike miller state farm hotline you get to coach some of your kids there some uh some former spartans but uh you also get to coach uh kids from around the state like like we mentioned in, in the west who aside from your kids have you been most excited to to coach well, the kid across town, Colter Janitaro, I tell you what, wow. this kid is special. He, uh, we've faced the Janitaro brothers for, I feels like, for a decade now. And to have them on our side, it's, a, it's fun. Uh, they're, they're from all over. I've been dealing mainly with offense, but I tell you what, the speed on the field are some hell of the kids that have jumped out. Um, but the small town kids from Manhattan, Coach Grabowski, Grabowski, he's an assistant coach here. His kids have been amazing. And then the, the Olsen kid from Butte. He's about six eight, tight end, runs well. He's got a, um, great hands, and so he's a weapon. And so, man, I, I can't get to them all, but because every kid's got a story. Really enjoyed getting Preston Medish from from Flint Creek, mm-hmm. caught up to speed. Uh, he's playing eight man ball, and just to see his growth, it's it's been amazing. And it's great to see the the bigger school kids mentor him, and it, he's going to make some plays this Saturday night. So there's going to be plenty of kids that show up and. Um, it's nice to have them on our side. Do you favor the kids that are going to the Grizz? Oh, listen, <laughs> I've said this all along. It, it is not about me or, uh, this is about kids who, uh, we want them to go where they're going to be most successful. So Jason Fitzgerald, you give him a little hard time. He's going to the and, <laughs> and he's a smart, intelligent kid. And, and wherever they're going, Rocky Tech, we got them from all over Western and they're all college football players. And it's, it's fun to coach them. Who, you, who, you, who scares you the most on that East roster? Well, just about the entire defensive line. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're, you know, the, the kid from Haver. You got the Bozeman Fedek kid. You got the interior kid from Billing Central. Uh, the Great Falls, uh, DeRocher, state champion wrestler. I mean, they're going to get after us up front, so our, our boys better be ready to go. and It's going to be a dogfight. Uh, Dane Oliver is our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. Um, Give me some secrets. Are you pulling out some plays? Uh, what what type of offense are we going to see here? Well, you know, we we got to get a little advantage here, Jason. I can't be giving away the trade secrets, <laughs> but it's listens. an all-star game, right? <laughs> so my goal is to, to make sure everybody has a positive experience, and you can have a positive experience in a lot of different ways, but you'd like to spread the ball around. Listen, I played receiver. I know on the offensive side of the ball, it's nice to get a touch in a game, especially could potentially be your last one. So, We'll, we'll spread the field, move it around, but in the end, we got to get it in our playmakers' hands. I know our defense is filled with a bunch of speed, uh, so they'll run the ball well. And you know, we got some, we got some stuff like you do at every All Star game. But eh, I've always said that these games, you got a week to prepare. So it's who can snap it, put it down, kick it, just do the basic fundamentals. That's going to be who's most successful. A lot of kids uh, the last couple of years, and this is kind of a serious question before a couple of fun ones to end it, but. A lot of kids have opted out uh, over the last couple of years of all-star games based off of what their college coaches want or not. I think it's great that in Montana, we still get to see a lot of these great kids. Yeah, absolutely. It's part of the reason the Shrine game moved up. You know, 
uh, as college football has grown, these, this is an investment that these colleges are putting into these kids. So they want them to be healthy coming into camp. So this game in July, it, there wasn't enough time for them to recover in case they get dinged up. So moving it up, we didn't have a ton of kids opt out. Um, everybody's got their own story and own, own reason. We've got great kids here in camp, this camp, and uh, it, it's fun to coach high-level football players. You get to spend a few days in Butte. What's the food situation been like for the coaches? Uh, well, hey, we've been living like kings. Uh, Montana Tech had a football camp. We normally stay in the dorms. It's been a vacation for me. We've been at the Copper King. Uh, it's a beautiful hotel. We've got air, AC, so no excuses why sh- we shouldn't be ready because the East has been staying in a hot dorm. But we've been to – I mean, Butte does what Butte does, and they take care of people. They're, they're very much a service-minded community. We've been to McQueen, uh, Knights of Columbus, the Shriners, obviously. They've taken care of us well. I've put on a few pounds. <laughs> well, you got all summer to, 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 to get it off before the season starts. Um, when you get down to Billings, and what's the message? Uh, what's the, how much fun will the message be on, on Saturday night in the locker room? Well, the message is go out there and have some fun, right? They all love the game of football, but it, it, it's a business trip still. So we're trying to find that balance. It, it, we're Thursday night, so we're having meetings tonight. We've been cutting them loose, but we're locking her down. I call it the final 48. Because uh, what's fun to me is when you play good football. And so what's been nice is those kids, they all agree with that. They're not fighting me on downtime. They, they want to get better. They want to play a good football game. Uh, we're going to make some mistakes because it's tough to bring these guys together. We just got to stay level-headed composed uh do what we do and uh, i believe it, it'll be a great shrine game the 74th annual montana east west shrine game did you did this uh, what's it mean to coach it i mean as a i mean the coaches get to coach in this have you been as an assistant in this before yeah i've coached it in 2016 as an assistant obviously you know what it means it's a great reminder jason that uh, i've got it pretty good and and like I have three daughters myself and, and we've been super fortunate to have healthy, healthy young, young girls. And so I think it's a, it's like traveling to a third world country a little bit. It, it opens your eyes and if we all need reminders on how, how fortunate we are uh, with our circumstances because we got it pretty good. So on a personal level, that's what it's about for me to, it's more than football. It's like, Hey, we all need this uh, as a way to, to, to check if I'm feeling down about, whatever situations come up that I got it pretty good still. I know your buddy, John Fitzgerald, the coach at Red Lodge is coaching the, uh, the East, but what's the first play of the game offensively for the West? Oh yeah. We're going, hey, we're going to take a shot deep. First play of the game. I like you it. Tell, you tell coach Fitzgerald, we're coming, we're going deep shot. Right? I like it. Hey coach, I'm going to let you go rest that voice, get some hot tea and lemon and, uh, in, uh, in, enjoy the final 48 before that kickoff on, on, uh, on Saturday night. Congratulations on being named the coach. Have fun down there and look to look to talk to you soon once we get the uh, double-A season rolling again. Awesome, Jason. I appreciate you covering the game. That is uh, Dane Oliver, Sentinel coach, West High, or West coach, not West High. Sentinel football coach. He's coaching the West in the East-West Shrine game this weekend. Saturday night, 7 o'clock, Dela Stadium. It's going to be a lot of fun. So appreciate him joining us uh, today on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. As well, you know, we've got another great sponsor on the Jason Walker Show. We have unbelievable ones, but uh, another great one is Montana Horses Magazine. Montana Horses Magazine. It's all horses, all Montana, all Montana horses, packed with every wonderful, wow worthy thing that you'll want to know about all things Montana horses. Check out Montana Horses Magazine. And if you look close at this month's issue, what is that? That's a Jason Walker Show logo. Yeah, we are proud to be a part of uh, Montana Horses Magazine. Get your copy um, at Montana Horses Magazine. Okay? Just do it. Uh, appreciate them hopping on board as well, and, and glad to be a part of, uh, of their venture as well. Uh, let's see here. What else did we want to hit on before uh, we go to, go to break? Um, I think that was it. Dana Oliver. Oh, MSUB's got a new... We'll talk MSUB's new uh, athletic director when we come back here, Jason Walker Show. This segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. Make the quality choice for your home. Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. 
Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Welcome back to the Jason oh, Walker Show. Man. I love this job. It's not even a job. It's a Walker Show presented by Capital Collision Center, hanging out in Major Mortgage Man Cave. Uh, next week, we will have, we should have rodeo tickets to the Last Chance Stampede to give away, as well as Jason Walker Show t-shirts. We are going to sponsor the Rodeo Clown at uh, this year. Dennis, uh, help. I got to look it again. The heck's his name? I keep forgetting it. Um, but we are going to uh, sponsor... The Rodeo Clown, Dennis Halstead. That's what I, yeah, it's going to be fun. All right. What do we want to get? Oh, uh, MSUB's got a new athletic director. And I will tell you who it is in a second, as soon as I get to the right, uh, right thing. I will also tell you that Tyler Murray is leaving St. Ignatius after four years to become the head football coach at East Helena. So that's cool. Michael Bazemore was uh, at MSUB for a while, and he's coming back. He was named the athletics director at MSUB, uh, announced by Chancellor Stephanie um, Hickswa today. And uh, according to the MSUB press release, the native of Philly will begin on July 26th. Krista Montague, of course, leaving after nine years and uh, announced her resignation back on March 30th. He, uh, Bazemore was the former director of compliance uh, at the athletic department of MSUB, was five years with the Yellow Jackets, uh, just came from, uh, got hired from the NCAA, where he was in Indianapolis as uh, the chief rules officer and liaison, a liaison to the NCAA and GNAC for three years. And he also uh, mentioned, like I said, it was at MSUB, and he's just come from, uh, he is currently the Assistant Director of Academic and Membership Affairs in Indianapolis. He's been there since uh, almost three years. So there you go. Congratulations. And uh, will football be added at MSUB? <laughs> that is the age-old question. And does MSUB drop down? To the Frontier in NAI or stay D2. All right. U.S. Open's going on over at Torrey Pines in San Diego. 
Russell Henley has the sole lead right now at four under. You've got Francesco uh, Molinari, Rafa Cabrero Bayo is three under, along with Francesco. Xander Shoffley, Brooks Kepka, two under. They are through uh, today. Matthew Wolf had like eight birdies, and then he had a whole bunch of doubles and bogeys and still finished one under. It's crazy. Uh, there's He's amongst the group of a bunch, tied for sixth. Or that a bunch. Uh, let's see. Even par, you've got a whole bunch at, uh, at tied for 19th. A lot of them still on the course. John Rom threw two, and he's even. Patrick Reed, Jordan Spieth. Spieth was my pick to win it. Um, if you were for gambling purposes or entertainment purposes. Uh, let's see. Bryson, D-Bag, Chambeau is even through three. Uh, let's see. Who else is uh, still on the course? Tommy Fleetwood's done. He's won over. Phil Mickelson went four over today at Torrey Pines. Colin Morikawa, another pick to win it, was four over today as well. So you can uh, check it out. U.S. Open. Cool stuff. I'm still going with Jordan. I got to go with Jordan Spieth. He's, uh, if he doesn't win it, then Kepka. All right. Rocky Hall of Fame. No, we didn't. Did we, want, did we want to talk about that? I don't even remember. Nobody tells me anything on this show. What are we talking about? I don't think so. Rocky announced his new Hall of Fame class. Congratulations. Two football teams, uh, the 98, 99, or 97, 98 football teams. So there you go. CNFR continues. Paige Rasmussen still leads after three nights. You've got uh, the fourth perf to, or rather, the uh, third perf tonight. It is uh, Cancer Awareness Give Cancer the Boot Night. Got a couple of MSU kids doing pretty well, um, and Paige Rasmussen leading the way in uh, GOATS. Telling you. Montana State women also leading the way, which is pretty cool, too. All right, let's do On This Day in History. It is brought to you by Big Sky Printwear. We print what you wear, and that includes the Jason Walker Show t-shirts that we're going to uh, give away uh, next week with our rodeo tickets for the Last Chance Stampede. Today is Global Garbage Man Day. We thank our garbage man, especially here where we live. Our garbage man is great. Our neighbor, who lives literally... Uh, that way, put some message on an app for our neighborhood showing some garbage on the street a couple weeks ago and and facetiously, basically he was giving the garbage man crap. Well, what he doesn't know is that a couple of people I've talked with when they drove by before the garbage truck showed up, his garbage was already on the ground. But then he was funny because after like people responded to him, he, he's like, uh, you know, opinions are like, you know, the saying opinions are like blank. Uh, everyone has one and they all stink. And then, and then, so I responded because I just like to do that sometimes and said, you're the one that started the thread, but then you get butt hurt when people comment on it. <laughs> anyway, it is National Garbage Day today, so congratulations. Uh, Global Garbage Man Day. It is Eat Your Vegetables Day. Stewart's Root Beer Day, Apple Strudel Day, Cherry Tart Day, National Mascot Day, Hawks, Bobcats. And this date in 1880, Providence Gray's MLB pitcher John Ward throws a perfect game, beats the Buffalo Bisons 5 0. It is the second perfect game in the National League in six days, 1880. The next perfect game in the National League, 84 years later. 1901 at the U.S. Men's Open. Willie Anderson of Scotland wins the first of his four Open titles by a stroke in an 18-hole playoff. In uh, 2018, whoa, we missed a whole bunch of stuff here. Our whole thing is, like, frozen up. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, I had an awesomeness. Somebody won their first major championship on this date. Oh, Johnny Miller. Uh, let's see here. I can't refresh this, can I? Can I go back? I don't know. No? 
Not sure what's going on. Okay, Ted Williams hit his 500th home. I'll just give you the ones I can read. Jack Nicholas won his first Open on this date, 1962. Ted Williams hit his 500th home run on this date, 1960. There were some really good ones, too. Uh, by the way, when Jack won his first, he beat Arnie by three in a playoff. Uh, Webb Simpson won his first major title on this date in 2012 at the U.S. Open. We talked about Willie. It's some great birthdays today, too. Who else? What the heck is going on with the computer here? Oh, I don't know. It's probably the dude I was just ripping on. It's probably hacking into my system or something. You never know. Um, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, oh, I did. By, this is really cool. Before we finish on this day in history, I got a call or a text message from a guy who uh, we're going to meet up next week. This show might be heard um, on a few other places. We're going to talk about that next week. So that'll be kind of cool. Anyway, what else did I... Now I got to get back. It was somebody's birthday today. It was really good. Um, sports related. Because that's what we do. Now we're just killing time until I can try to reopen this thing. After talking about garbage men and whatnot. Because they're cool. And apparently I'm not on this show as we try to get things. Does this work? Oh, yes, it worked. All right. So Jack Nicholas won a... Won a uh, major, his first on this date, U.S. Open. Okay, we got that. Hale Irwin won his second U.S. Open on this date in 1979. And then he won it on this date, 1990, his third. Uh, Payne Stewart won in a Monday playoff, 1991. Uh, 2018, Brooks Kepka beat Tommy Fleetwood to go back-to-back. -back. Uh, Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch, that's whose birthday it is. Um, that's the one we wanted to get to. Born on this date in 1923. And also, this is the anniversary. What is it, 27 years now? Is that right? Has it been that long already? Do you remember where you were 27 years ago? Today? Maybe maybe getting ready to watch an NBA playoff game? And there was this? around 645. A little bit after the main part of rush hour. The, the chase? The though, are attempting to clear the freeway, although you can see a car right there going up right next to the Bronco. Uh, not an easy job clearing the freeway. Yeah, how about that? O.J. Simpson uh, formally charged today with two counts of murder. He was supposed to surrender at 11 o'clock today. Uh, basically, his attorney turned his back, and O.J. managed to get out, get away. Get away, apparently, with his good friend, uh, Al Cowlings. Now, we have a little bit of an update. This is off the... Remember this? Press wire. 1994 on this date. Is it According 27? According to uh, someone who is monitoring police scanners... That's not right, is it? The is, is the math right? ...says he would not give himself up. He's in the back of the vehicle. He has a gun to his head, and he says he will hurt himself. He is demanding... To be taken it to is, his 27 mother. years ago today. Apparently is information off of police About this time it kind of started. The there you go. Continue to watch from Sky 11. All right, O.J. Simpson on this date Broncos. made his little uh, trek through, I think, L.A. and Orange County. So that was fun. Oh, goodness. On this day in history brought to you by Big Sky Print, where we print what you wear. 35 plus years of experience. Sheila and the gang know exactly what they're doing. You want one shirt, done. You want a thousand, hundred, done. You know what direct, what's it called? Uh, direct to garment printing. It's so that you don't have like, well, your stuff's not going to get, it's not going to go bad. Okay? Just get in there on the corner of Henderson and Euclid. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. Great show today. Uh, at least it was till the last, like, two minutes. <laughs> but, no, we had fun. Thanks to Maya Hansen for joining us. Thank you to uh, Dane Oliver for joining us. Congratulations to each. Dane Oliver coaching the uh, West Saturday night's East-West Shrine game. Maya heading out to Butler University. The butler did it. How, oh, I'm sorry. I should never, I, I'm never going to utter that phrase again. Get into Dinner's Done Right. Get your summer grilling package. Thanks to Capital Collision Center, Major Mortgage Man Cave. Everybody that is a part of the show, we love you. We'll do it again Tuesday. We'll have Auto Concepts Performance of the Week and more.
And then next Thursday, we'll be, we'll be in studio here. Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll be back in Billings on Thursday next week as we get ready for the Montana Football Hall of Fame inductions. Hey, have a great Thursday. Go to jasonwalkershow.com if you want to watch anything over again. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy. Former pro football player himself, a longtime friend of O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson, when he was preparing to surrender...